Any go vacation yeah, ball team. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. guess what? <laughs> Sunday, I'm going to New York. I'm going on vacation right before football season. So my girl, we get Yankees are in town. We're going to see Yankees Rockies. I don't okay. give a damn about the Rockies. Right. It's all about Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. Yeah, yeah. And I'm expecting him to hit like two home runs that day. It's box office, Baldy. Yeah. It's electricity. I'm with the you. cameras are going off, paparazzi. And now we got the Giants losing to the White Sox, who are one of the worst teams ever. <laughs> and we're pulling pitches with 93 pitches, man. What's yeah. going on? Baldy, we were having this discussion uh, throughout the week where we were talking about like the worst teams that we've ever seen in any sport, mm -hmm. right? And in, in my mind— I played on one of them. Okay, I would love to hear it in a second. I'm thinking like the Bucks, right? The, the old Tampa Bay Bucks yep, teams yep. that used to be on all the Cream blooper circles. tapes, the VHSs <laughs> that we used to watch. 4 Niners were one of the worst teams I've ever seen in my life. Eric Johnson at tight end with Tim Rattay and, and a bunch Tim of Rattay. nothing. Tim yeah. Rattay. Yeah. Rattay. Yeah. Rattay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he broke all Terry Bradshaw's records over there. Okay. And, um, <laughs> that got him drafted. Yeah, the 2016 49ers with Chip Kelly, where they ran the same slow-developing read option play, and Jeremy Curley's their number one uh, you know, option. What's the worst team, when you close your eyes and you just think about it, the worst team you've ever seen? Well, I mean, is it the 08 Lions? 0 and 16? So I think the Cleveland team might have been worse. Uh, that well, Lions team was uh, bad. They had Megatron. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I played on a 115 Colts team. Whoa. Yeah, we, we went to New York. We beat the Jets. <laughs> and I partied my ass off. Like, I stayed in New York. <laughs> I parked my ass. I'm like, we got one. Like, we can't go, like, because I thought, like, you know, everybody got hurt. It was one of these things where somebody had a voodoo doll. We had eight guys that year break a leg. Oh, what? my gosh. Eight, guys, eight different players, oh including our starting center, who should be in the Hall of Fame, Ray Donaldson, who had never missed a game in his life. And this, like, second game of the year, we're out uh, at the Coliseum in L.A., and we're playing the Raiders, and he's on the ground. And Ray used to tell me all the time, Baldy, if you ever see me on the ground, I'm having a bad game. <laughs> so he's on the ground, and I look down at him and go, what's wrong with you? And he goes, I broke my leg. I go, get the hell out of here. So sure enough, he hops off the field. I see him at halftime. He's got a cast on his leg. So I'm the backup center. Oh so now I got to go play center against Howie Long. Like, wow. you know, and I haven't played center. Like, oh. I'm a backup, you know, center. I'm the right guard. <laughs> I got, and I now got Howie talking to me on my nose. Like, you know, <laughs> just, just ear banging me like crazy. <laughs> like, it was, but that, like, that was the year. Like, eight guys broke their what freaking leg. What year was that? That was 1991. I'm looking at the 91. roster right now. Jeff George was a quarterback. Jeff, Jeff George. George. Jeff George was the quarterback. Eric Dickerson played running back, played in 10 games. Yeah, but he got suspended the first six games. <laughs> right. So, he, like, he Why? was holding, he had a contract dispute. So he he holds out like the whole thing just went south, but th th we were so bad, we were so bad that I literally got the MVP of the team award. No, on a one in fifteen <laughs> team. Like, I don't know if I should say that or not. You guys beat like, the Jets. Were that bad. Look at this, they beat the Jets twenty eight to twenty seven. Yeah, they're a lone win. You lost to the Patriots later on in the season in Oof. overtime. Yeah, you started off zero and nine. Yeah, and the coach was Ron Meyer. Remember that? He got fired. Yeah. Right, he got fired. He got fired. So, so uh, Rick Venturi. Yeah, there you go. Rick Venturi was our interim head coach. He's now the voice of the Colts. Like, he does their... Well, so, Ron so Meyer was the guy who coached SMU with yes. Eric Dickerson, the Pony yeah. Express, and then yeah. he left and went to New England. Oh, he, to was, Super Bowl. He, 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 uh, he brought me to Indy, so I got nothing bad to say about it. I'll say this about Ron. I go, to, I go to the Colts. I have a choice. I go to Houston where my girlfriend's living, or I could go to Indy. I'm like, I had a vibe about, like, maybe the thing's not going to last with a girl, but I, I, I kind of like this guy in Indy. So I go to Indy. So I'm up there, and I'm, you know, he, he wanted me there. I'm going to be the backup guard center for him, whatever. So I'm up there. So we're three weeks into training camp. We have a Saturday night off, and he drove this badass Porsche, right? So I go, hey, coach, I got, I got this pickup truck, but I got this girl tonight. Like, can I, can I, can I use the Porsche? So he flips you me had the, key. the guts to ask him to he borrow the me Porsche. He flips me the key to the Porsche. No way. Yeah. I went out, took him, I took this girl out of his Porsche. <laughs> oh, you had the time of your life. Dude. I had a good time, man. <laughs> now, did you did you have any scratches I on the Porsche? You. Did no, you bring it no, back no, in one no. piece? I, I fill I fill up the gas like, again. Did you come back? No, with a I was tank? just there to try to impress. That's it. How many times did you punch it? Uh, I mean, you have to. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. like Indy, we call it Indy, uh, the Indiana no place. It's like the center of all these crossroads, Indiana 65, no 70, like all these freeways come through Indianapolis. So you just get out there on 70, man. You like put that thing at 100. What was Jeff George's issue? Like what? Because clearly he had talent. Oh. I think of him in Atlanta arguing with, with June Jones and, and Jerry Glanville. Look up, his rookie year was 1990. Look up. I think we won five games. We wouldn't have won any if it wasn't for Jeff. So like, what, just his talent. They said he had some of the best arm talent. His arm was ridiculous. He was 5-7 that year. Like, his first practice in 1990, yeah. he was late. He was what? late to the first practice. It was a walkthrough. <laughs> he was late to the—like, he drove his car onto the field. 
He was late coming from some. You guys were seven to nine that year. Seven, oh, seven, seven to nine. nine. Seven yeah. to nine. Yep. Jeff was he was unreal his rookie year, man. So worst but, team. That was your worst team you played on. Yeah, by we're far. watching the White Sox. They're yeah. thirty one and ninety seven yeah. right oh now. God, thirty one really? and ninety seven, Baldy. Oh. They've got thirty one wins. We're about to head the to South September. side, man. Oh. South side is sad. The South, sad. The sad my side. Buddy's, my, my buddy, uh, his dad used to coach that team. Larry Doby Senior, like oh, was yeah. like, wow. coach the White Sox. Oh yeah, yeah. He told yeah. us that story. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, wasn't he the first black player uh, Larry in the American League? Six weeks after Jackie. Yeah. Wow. Wow, in American League, world. first African American. So the Giants. And so you, they're thirty-one in what? Ninety-seven. Oh my God! Thirty-one the, the to ninety-seven. The lowest amount of wins for a hundred sixty-two game season is it's the Phillies, forty-three. What? What would the Phillies? Well, the win Tigers one in 04, They have they won forty-three games in 04. Yeah. Okay. Because I think I think the Phillies with Steve Carlton won twenty-seven games, I believe, on a team that won fifty something. <laughs> Check out Steve Carlton wow. like one year. Wow, that's, you won that's half the games. Me. Check that out, Spadoni. Philadelphia Phillies. Are yeah, I'm just throwing records. it out there. I yeah, think no, no. Did you watch the Pete Rose doc? No, but I would. I, mean, I, I would love to see it. Oh my God, Pete. it's it's sad. Yeah, it's awful. I couldn't turn it well, off. What 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 phase do they go through? Like the everything, whole, everything, everything. I, well, they don't go super deep on everything because there's a lot. You're like, uh, I mean, Pete off the field. Pete was a lot. I mean, whether well, they, the, we, the Phillies don't like, win the championship without Pete Rose, right. no doubt. Yeah. But I didn't realize him going to Philadelphia. I mean, that changed Michael Jack oh, Schmidt's totally. career. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he spoke Legacy. about him like he was. Oh yeah. The, the, the whisperer in his ear. I yeah, mean, that, yeah. he was his Bill Walsh, if you will. Okay. It was incredible. Yeah. No, I, that's true. That all that stuff is true. But Pete came to Philly, man. Forget it. Mm. Like that team was just so loaded. That Big. team is beloved in Philly, huh? Mm. I mean, look, every baseball team in Philly that wins a championship is beloved. I mean, you know, you go. But, like, that team is probably – that was the first championship. So, you know, I mean, I remember going out to Connie Mack Stadium when I was a kid. Wow. And watch, you know, Dick Allen, like, hit bombs outside <laughs> the stadium, man. <laughs> I, we, like, that was that was the greatest baseball player I saw live. Maybe Roberto Clemente. One, one wow. of the two well, so when I was a kid. Who's the worst team in the NFL right now, guys? Because I'm listening to some of my Raider buddies, uh, and they're texting back and forth, and they're like, I think – Well, I mean, is the Patriots, are they the worst team? I think the they Patriots just have away to their be. best player. Matthew Judon. I wanted Judon on the Niners so bad. Oh, my Matt God. Hey, he's a stud. Let me tell you something about Matt Judon. So I, I was out, I was out at that SAC Summit in Vegas with Vaughn and Max and all these guys this year, and Matt came out there. So, you know, we're, we're all talking about pass rush and, you know, all this stuff. It was actually really, really good and enlightening to me. But I, I went up to Matt, and I'm like, look, dude, like nobody knows all the little things that you do as part of Belichick's system. I mean, whether it's, you know, not letting tight ends get a free release yep. or checking backs out of the backfield before you, like, you could get, he could get 15 sacks a year easy if he just rushed the passer, if he just did that. But, like, he's such a team player, and he's so smart. But but that guy is a great player, man. Like, the Falcons uh, got a great player. No, Atlanta's loading up with uh, the Justin safety, Simmons. Justin Simmons now. They well, just you, signed, you know, if you go signed, Simmons, they had Jesse Bates last yeah, year, Jesse right? Bates right you now. Know how, many, you know how many interceptions Jesse Bates and Justin Simmons had between the two of them? They've got 50 interceptions. Wow. Wow. 50. Wow. They're going to be ball hawks. And you got A.J. Tarot just signed a big <clears throat> A.J. Player, player, contract man. extension. So we're talking about these bad teams. New England, I think, will be really, really That's bad. That's a bad roster. But it's man. a bad roster, which is, I don't blame Brendan Ayuk for not wanting to go to that roster. What's the worst team you've seen or covered in NFL history, Paul? Do you play it on a 1 to 15? Why is the Patriots, um, what, was it last year or the year before? Like, they got beat 34 0 by the Saints. And if they had. If they had a hundred possessions, they wouldn't have scored. Well, oh. What was it? Was it was it the the lack of offensive innovation for Belichick? Personnel was clearly a problem. They had Jalen Rager starting a wide receiver. Like this guy can't yeah, play. He can't play. He's still in the roster. I, but what happened with Belichick and the offensive coordinator thing? Like I know McDaniel's and him made sweet music. Why could he never find anyone else outside of McDaniel's? I don't know, like you know Matt Patricia. Like I mean, it was just like it was bizarre. Like he just thought he could plug anybody in at any of these positions. It really started falling apart when Dante Scarnecchia retired the second time. The first time he retired, you know, they lost at Denver. And, you know, Denver, like, they, they, I don't know, they hit Tom Brady 20 times that game. And, like, literally, Belichick fired his offensive line coach on the way home from that championship game in Denver. And then they, they hired Dante back. And I played for Dante, so I'm speaking on behalf. Like, he was a great coach. But, like, they, they hadn't really replaced him. They can't build an offensive line. Mm. Like, they don't have a left tackle right now. Like, they, like they're like they not getting, like, I, I feel bad for Drake May if he has to go out there. Or anybody wow. that plays quarterback. So, so what is it like being on one of these backs? Because we were talking about, boy, what is it like on the White well, Sox? Well, they're out there playing in the outfield. They're losing 5-1. and one. You know you're going to lose another game. You're probably thinking about your so nightlife. I used to use the analogy that literally the wheels would fall off every game that, of the car. 
But like, what? What? How early would the wheels fall off? And you feel helpless. Could you get helpless? Like I, we had a lot of young guys. You know, they weren't professionals. They're out drinking. They're at Hooters. You know, all <laughs> night, whatever. So Saturday, I used to have a special film session for everybody. <laughs> uh, like the, the Saturday morning before our team session. Right. So, <clears throat> so I'm playing. I'm playing. I think right tackle, and we have this kid. I'll, I'll, I'll say his name, Pat Tomberlin. He was a third-round pick out of Florida State. He didn't really like football. He was a wide-body, big guy, you know. So I remember we're playing, um, we're playing the, the Arizona Cardinals. So uh, I'm playing right tackle. He's at right guard. We had an injury, so he's got to come in and play. So they kicked me from right guard to right tackle in this game. So I go out there. So, like, we have this timeout, and we got, we're in the game against Arizona. So they got Freddie Joe Nunn out there, right? They got some pass rushers. So we got this timeout, and I go to Pat. I go, look. If Freddie Joe sinks down to a three technique, you got to block him on this protection. Huh. If he's out wide, I got him. Okay. So, so sure enough, like we're in the snap count and Freddie Joe sinks down. <laughs> he's got three technique, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'll never forget this. Like, I I turn around, something's weird about the play. And there's Freddie Joe Nunn sacking Jeff George. Oh. So, you know, in the sack, fumble, Arizona gets the ball. So I'm coming off the field. The coach is yelling at me. Like, yelling, I'm like, look, coach, like, honestly, I told him what to do. Like, so I go to Pat, I go, what the hell? What happened? He goes, oh, man, I just had a brain freeze. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm man. Like, oh. It's so, good. like, there was like there was that type of thing. Right. Like, these guys just weren't, they, they just didn't study, and they weren't professional. And we didn't have enough guys that really, you know, wanted it. We got to go on the other side because I've got more on this. Uh, man, bad teams, bad teams. Watching the White Sox in town, man. The Giants score 11 runs against the White Sox. Oh. Probably shows how mediocre they are. They fought life and death with the 31 and 97 White Sox, man. Oh. Three and two against uh, the A's I and mean, White it's, Sox. It's, it's, it's not it's good enough. Bad, it's just bad baseball, Baldy. It's not Football good enough. Football can't come soon enough yeah. here in the Bay Area. All right, we're coming up.